Colonel, thank you so much for joining us. I want to start out by talking about reports that the U.S. has shot down an Iranian drone in southern Syria near the U.S. base in Tanz. Uh, we've seen a lot of activity coming out of this base recently, but clearly there's a lot of traffic in the skies above southern Syria at the moment. I just wanted to ask you, is there a danger that this is escalating into a kind of conflict between the U.S. and Iran in this part of Syria? Well, first off, that's certainly something that we do not want to happen. Uh, our mission is clear, and that is to defeat ISIS in Iraq and Syria. And in Syria, in the particular location near Atanaf, where this drone was shot down, that was the third time that the pro-regime elements have shown hostile intent towards our forces. So last night, uh, we did engage uh, a Iranian-made uh, drone that was advancing on our forces, and it was shot down by a U.S. aircraft. And so why do you think this is a recurring theme, that you have this recurring hostility? Why is this strategically important for forces aligned to the Syrian regime? I certainly won't speak to the Syrian regime. Uh, I will speak to the coalition, and that is our goal and our number one reason is to defeat ISIS and to train our partner forces in this particular area. We've made it very clear that we do not want to engage the regime, and we would like to be able to focus on our number one goal, which is defeat ISIS. We have shown several times in the past, and we have escalated uh, the, uh, from warning shots to shows of force through using a deconfliction line. This is something that we do not want to be focused on. We do not want to have to fight the regime. We want to be focused on our uh, fight to defeat ISIS. Is it fair to say, though, that you're concerned that it is a potential inevitability that you will be put into a position where you have to fight the regime and its various allies on the ground? Well, we will continue to use the deconfliction line. We will continue to try to dissuade the regime from continuing acts of aggression uh, so that we can focus on our number one effort, and that is to defeat ISIS. And right now, uh, that is in Raqqa in Syria, and that is their de facto capital. And we want to continue to support and focus our efforts on defeating ISIS in Raqqa, their self-proclaimed caliphate. You bring up Raqqa and the deconfliction line. Uh, of course, the U.S. last week shot down a Syrian jet over Raqqa. The Russians are now saying that the deconfliction line of communication is closed, although the U.S. is saying it's not. What can you tell us about the shooting down of this jet and how it may have impacted communication with the Russians? Well, for the same uh, reasons that the drone was shot down and the other incidents uh, that have happened with the Syrian regime, this uh, Su-22 Syrian jet had showed hostile intent and action by dropping bombs on coalition partnered forces north of a deconfliction line that was agreed upon by the Syrian Democratic Forces commander on the ground and the Syrian regime commander on the ground. We are there to support our partners, and they showed this in hostile intent. And so we're going to defend our partners, we're going to defend our forces, and we want to be focused on our uh, number one goal is defeating ISIS. I just would like to read you a quote from the Russians uh, regarding this incident. They said, any air objects found west of the Euphrates River, including aircraft and unmanned vehicles belonging to the International Coalition, will be escorted by Russian air and ground defenses as air targets. Your response to that, do you see that as a threat? Well, that was a first statement that came out. There was a second statement that came out that was uh, not as uh, uh, poignant. And I will say that we will always be available to use the deconfliction line with the Russians. It has proven its worth in the past to tap down tensions uh, and to avoid any type of strategic miscalculations. So we will continue to use that line. We are using that line. And we will continue to focus our efforts on defeating ISIS in Syria. 
in all seriousness, though, is there a sense that there are escalating tensions in the skies over Syria? Well, we are always going to be very mindful of the very congested and complex battle space that is Syria. And we will go through extraordinary measures to make sure that our air crews and our ground forces and our partner forces on the ground are being covered and are safe and have all the means to defend ourselves. We do not have a fight with the regime, with Russians. Our number one focus is on ISIS, which is the number one threat in not just Iraq and Syria and to the region, but to the rest of the world. I want to touch as well, uh, if you will, on the coalition airstrikes uh, on Raqqa and other ISIS-held territory. The UN coming out with a statement saying that there have been enormous amount of civilian casualties. I'd like you, if you wouldn't mind, to listen to the statement and then I'll ask you for comment in, on it afterwards. We note in particular that the intensification of air strikes, which have paved the ground for an SDF advance in Raqqa, has resulted not only in staggering loss of civilian life, but has also led to 160,000 civilians fleeing their homes and becoming internally displaced. You heard the words there, staggering loss of life. Do you think that's a fair assessment, and are you comfortable with the U.S. military being held accountable for that? Well, I certainly do not uh, believe and agree with that uh, particular statement. And we go through extraordinary measures to make sure that we always take into account uh, civilians and civilian structures when we conduct our strikes. The uh, staggering uh, losses that uh, that this claim has made are unfounded and we are always open and transparent with our civilian casualty assessments and we come out very openly uh, with uh, those assessments on a monthly basis. And do you find those assessments, have you found that the numbers are indeed high? Uh, those numbers uh, currently right now uh, is 484 uh, since we began the campaign to defeat ISIS in, in uh, uh, Iraq and in Syria. So you would say that the UN is wrong when they say staggering? I would say that the UN is wrong when they uh, bring up this uh, number. And there was uh, cited in this particular uh, same uh, announcement uh, of a civilian casualty allegation that is not true and this was in the Al Mansura neighborhood and we will come out and provide that information uh, in our next civilian casualty uh, report uh, that will uh, show that that is not true. Okay, well we will be looking out for that report. Colonel Dillon, thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you.